Good morning, everyone. I hope I'm audible to you. Am I audible to you? Is the screen visible to you? Okay, great. So last week we discussed about strings and string builder. Okay. So today we are going to start with something called as an exception handling which will be used throughout the course. The exception handling mechanism is a mechanism where you handle the, any exception that is occurring when the program is running, when the program is running. To illustrate this particular concept of how to handle the exception when my program is running, kindly note, we are not talking about the compile time error. Compile time error is the error which is caught at the compile time. I am talking about the certain conditions for accord by which there will be an exception occurring when the program is running. When the program is running. To illustrate this concept, let's consider this code where I am saying in d is equal to 0, in t is equal to 42 divided by d. Now what has happened in this case is we are dividing the number 42 by d and d is 0 over here. So it is going to give me an exception. So when I click on the run button, what should happen is it should raise an error, not sorry, I will change my wording. It should raise an exception saying that there is an exception in the program when my main function is executing. And it is raising an exception on line number 4 because here what has happened, we are divided 42 by D which is 0. So it is saying that when my main program is running, it is raising an exception called as divide by 0. Divide by 0. So most of the object oriented programming such as Java, Python, C++ provide us something called as an exception handling mechanism. Okay, and in that exception handling mechanism, we monitor the code. We monitor the code using a try catch block. We monitor the code using a try catch block. To illustrate this particular concept, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this particular code. Have a look at it. In D comma A, okay, we are declared the variables. Now. What I'm doing, I'm monitoring the code in the try block. I'm monitoring the code in the try block. In the try block, what I have done, I have said D is equal to 0, A is equal to 42 upon D. Then I have got system dot out dot print line. This will not be printed. This is just for explanation. This particular line is going to give me an exception and that exception is arithmetic exception. 
okay so if you look over here we have java dot language dot arithmetic exception a and e are capital so what i had to do is after the try block i have to catch that particular exception so i catch the exception by saying catch arithmetic exception e catch arithmetic exception e so this particular line which is giving an exception is caught over here and that error message such as this divided by zero is stored in a variable called as e can you give any name yes you can give any name i'm giving it e because it's an exception and then I print this a particular exception over here, which is E. And then what will happen? My program will continue after this. That means we have a try block, we have a catch block, and then the rest of the statements will be after this. So how the code will execute? Line number three will be executed. Whichever code you want to monitor will be monitored over here, okay? B is equal to 0, A is equal to 42 upon B. So this is going to flag an exception. So this particular line will not be executed. Okay. This particular line will not be executed. It will come and try to match an exception. That exception is arithmetic exception. Yes, it's a valid exception. Okay. So that message will store in E. That will be printed. And then my try catch block is over. The program will start executing after this. So when I run the code over here, what should happen is this gave me an exception. So line number eight was not executed. It came into the line number nine. This exception was stored in E that is being printed such as Java dot language arithmetic exception divided by zero. And after that, after the cache statement is displayed, after the cache statement is displayed. In case I change this and set it as 10, then what should happen? D is 10, A is equal to 42 upon D. So 42 upon D is a valid operation. So what will happen? This line will be executed. There is no exception, so this won't be executed and it will execute after the cache statement. After the cache statement. So when I run it, what should happen is, it should display this will not be printed along with after the cat statement. So here the exception was not raised. Why it was not raised? Because this is a valid operation. D is not zero. So it won't raise any exception. So it will come over here. So when your program is running, there is a possibility that the exception might be raised or may not be raised. If it raises, it's our job to catch it. Clear? Is it clear to you? Any doubt in this example? Any doubt in this example? No. Okay. So please pay attention over here. What is this program visible to you? Is my program visible to you? Okay. 
So what is this program supposed to do? This program is supposed to catch two exception. One is arithmetic exception, another is array index out of bound exception. Okay. So what is this particular int a is equal to args dot length? Let's try to understand this. Let's try to understand this. So what is happening in this case is you have a class main, you have a main method, and I told you that this particular main can accept the argument. The main can accept the argument. So where do you pass a command line argument? We pass a command line argument over here. Okay. In the command line argument. So in the command line argument, I'm just typing code is fun. Okay. Code is fun. So this particular string args, this particular argument is holding this particular string code is fun. Code is fun. So in this case, A is 3. So when I run the code, what should happen is since you have passed three parameters, code is fun and each parameter is separated by the space, you will get the value of A as 3. So this particular line in B is equal to 42 divided by A will not flag any error, will not flag any error. Look at the seventh line in C square bracket equal to 1. So C is an array with how many elements? One element and that element is 1. That element is 1. If you want you can change this so that you're not getting confused with the index. Let's assume the zeroth index has got the data as 10. Now this particular line, line 8, C42 is equal to 99. What this is doing? It is going to the 42nd index and assigning the value 99. Is displaying the value 99. Okay. So what is in this case is happening is this is this is going to flag an exception. This particular line is going to flag an exception. Why? Because we have an array with only one element and that index is zero. So you're trying to access the 42nd index. At the 42nd index, you're trying to assign the value. So what will happen in this case? It will come and see whether it's matching with arithmetic exception. Is it? No. Then it will come over here to the second exception. Is this array index out of bound exception true? Yes. So it will display that error message. Okay. So and after that it will display after try catch block. So let's try to run this. Let me make this class as public. So have a look at this. What is the command line argument? Code is fun. So what is the value of a? 3. What is b? 42 divided by 3. Okay. So 42 divided by 3 is not going to flag any exception. C square bracket is equal to 10 is going to assign 10 to an array. C 42 is equal to 99 is going to assign 99 to 42nd index. So here what has happened? It has raised arithmetic exception. No, it has raised array index out of bound exception. Why? Because you are trying to access the 42nd element which doesn't exist. Is it matching with arithmetic exception? No. Is it matching with Array index out of bound exception? Yes. So what will it display? Array index out of bound exception and then actual message. And what is that actual message? Java dot language dot arithmetic. Sorry, array index out of bound exception. Okay. Index 42 out of bound for length 1. Index 42 out of bound for length 1. You provided the length as 1. You are trying to access the 42nd element which is not allowed. And after that, it peacefully executes after the try catch block. Okay. Now I will remove this. Now I will remove this. So I'm not providing any command line argument. I'm not providing any command line argument. In this case, now what will happen? A will be zero. This will be zero. But this statement on the sixth line is going to provide an error. Is going to provide an error. Clear? 
is going to provide an error. So in B is equal to 42 divided by A is going to give me an error. So what should happen? And that is divided by zero. It is nothing but arithmetic exception. So it will come here and display divided by zero and it will display E, which is arithmetic exception. Let's run the code again. We have not entered any command line argument. So what should happen? This line should give me an error. Okay. Sorry, I will change it. This particular line should give me an exception. So it won't execute this particular line. It will come here and check what is the exception. Is it arithmetic exception? Yes. So what will happen? It will display divide by zero and it will display after try catch. After try catch. Is it clear to you? Is the code clear to you? So there is a possibility that a program may have multiple exception. A program may have multiple exception. So what I'm doing in this case is, if I enter some arguments, then what will happen? This will be valid. This will be valid. But this will give me an error. So that will be error index out of bound. Okay. But if I don't type any argument, then what will happen? That will be divided by zero. That will be divided by zero and it will give me an exception called as arithmetic exception. Giving you two minutes to run this particular program. Kindly execute it, run it.
Is it clear to you? Have you tried this example? Kindly try it out so that you understand both the exceptions. Okay. Any doubt? All these exceptions are in Java dot language packet. That's why we don't have to import anything. We don't have to import anything. So what you're supposed to do now? So what is the use of all this? Let me elaborate it. What you're supposed to do, you're supposed to accept an integer. Okay, you're supposed to accept an integer. But when you're accepting an integer, you type a string. You type a string. Fine, accept an integer. For example, if I have something like this, okay, right? You have an integer, you accept a string. My question to you is, can we catch the exception? Can we catch this exception? So in short, what I'm trying to tell you is, declare an integer, accept a character or a string, so can we catch this exception? If yes, then what should be the code? So what I want you to do is I want you to declare an integer variable and accept a character or a string and tell me whether you can handle this exception or not. Okay, you will have to go to the net and find out an appropriate exception that you can do it. But kindly provide me the code. This activity is for five minutes. What you're supposed to do is in a simple class, declare an integer, accept a string. It will give me an error. Can we catch that particular exception? I want you to declare an integer variable, accept a character and tell me whether it is going to flag an exception or not.
Kalma, at any point of time, you are going to have only one exception, not both. See, what I want you to do is class public class. Let's give the name. Uh, let's give the name as test public. Let me copy this. public static word main okay in a scanner obj equal to new scanner System dot in a is equal to obj dot next okay. And I'm going to do a simple SOP system dot out dot print line A. And let me enter the standard input as 10. And let me run this. So we have a main method, we have a class. Uh, execute it. Let me import. Import Java dot util dot scanner. Execute it and it displays 10 and it displays 10. Now, instead of that, if I enter A, then what should happen? It gives me an exception. It gives me an exception. So, I want you to handle this exception. Okay, so I want a try catch block over here. So, do it and show me the solution.
So try writing a try cache block and give me the solution. No. Anyone has completed it? So try monitoring it, try opening place. Closing brace. Okay, because this is going to throw an exception in case you don't enter the number. So let's have catch. And the exception that is raised if you look at this particular code is input mismatch exception input mismatch exception so let's try let's put it over here catch okay let's type a e and let's put this particular System.out.print line. Let's put a E over here. Okay. Let's run the same code again. Now it says cannot find the exception input mismatch exception input mismatch exception that means that means what is happening is when I ran the previous program when I ran the previous program okay it gave me the correct answer in the sense that if you enter the number it ran perfectly well but when you looked at the exception it said java.util.exception okay java.util.input mismatch exception so what i can do is i can simply put a star over here saying that import everything from the util package import everything from the util package okay and it is giving me an exception saying that java.util.input output exception you can make it more meaningful by having data not an integer okay and then we could have the E over here. Then you could have the E. Right? Data not an integer, java.util.input-output exception. But I told you that you shouldn't make a habit of writing the star. You should not make a habit of writing the star. So instead of that, what I will do? I will import this. Okay, and here I will say scan. So point number one, how do I write an exception handling mechanism? Whichever code you want to monitor, put it in the try block, okay? And then write an appropriate catch block, okay? These are the predefined one. These are the predefined one. So you should be typing it exactly as it is. That means it should be input mismatch exception. 
this particular variable could be anything which is storing that exception which i'm using it over here which i'm using it over here and plus meaningful data if you want you could type something like this is it clear vishal Yes, we could have written the exception E, but exception E is something after catching the more specific exception, the last exception should be exception E. Exception E is a top level exception. Exception E is a top level exception. Okay, it is saying that catch the general exception. That's it. Our aim should be to catch the specific exception, not the general exception. Our last case, our last case in a program should be catch exception. Okay. That means anything other than that, if it occurs, kindly catch it over here. Kindly catch it over here. That's it. Any other exception which we haven't foreseen. Okay. You want to catch it, then have it over here. Generalized exception should be at the end. The specific one should be at the beginning. So you understood the power of exception because whenever user is entering the data, okay, when the user is entering the data, we are assuming that user will enter the correct data. But what if they have not entered the correct data? Then we have to check for input mismatch exception. Input mismatch exception. Okay, now what you are supposed to do, now that you know input output exception, you are supposed to accept these two things, input 1, input 2, Ten should be divided by two, and whatever whatever is the remain uh, ten should be divided by two, and it should give me the quotient, which is five. Next case, you enter ten, you enter a. Output should be exception. Okay, it should display the input out input mismatch exception. Next data is ten and zero. Output should be arithmetic exception okay this should be clear so you are supposed to accept two integer from the user and display the quotient in case user doesn't enter the number any of the numbers then it should give me input mismatch in case you enter 10 and 0, then what should happen? It should give me arithmetic exception. It should give me arithmetic exception. So I want you to write how many exception? Two exception. One is input mismatch. Another is arithmetic exception in the same program. In the same program. So I will just copy paste this particular code to you. Make the changes and it should be in a position to handle this multiple exception. Kindly handle two exception, Y arithmetic exception, B input mismatch exception.
Yes, so I got one of the solution from Mansi and the code is working well. Just change the name of your class and a package name. It might be the issue. Is it clear? No, I was not audible. I was waiting for you all to complete it. So as soon as I got a code from one of the student, I change it and it is working. So let me see some of the solutions. Mm. Do not make a habit of declaring the variable over here. Kindly pay attention. Do not declare it as int A, int B and int C for a very simple reason. If you want to access it outside, you cannot access it. Kindly declare all the variables right at the top and then initialize it in the try catch block. Do not, do not, do not declare it inside because if you declare it inside and then later on, if I want to access it, I will not be in a position to access it. So most of you have made the mistake of declaring the variable inside the try catch block. Do not do that. Declare the variable right on top. I hope you get this particular concept. Is it clear to you? What I'm trying to tell you is do not declare the variable over here in the try block. The moment you declare it in the try block, that means those variables can be accessed only in this particular block. Hence, you declare it right at the top and then initialize it here inside. Are you with me? If you have any doubts, kindly raise it. It is very simple. I just caught two exceptions. One is input mismatch. Another is arithmetic exception and those exceptions are controlled by what user is entering, what the user is entering. Any doubt till now? Pay attention over here. When I declare a variable E, it is of the type input mismatch exception. Whatever comes before this E, that is the type of it. I hope it clarifies. What will happen if I do something like this? Public class main in the try what I have done in int a, in b, exception, and then I have written arithmetic exception. What will happen in this case? As I have mentioned, it will give me an error. It will give me an error. Let me run this. Now pay attention over here. What it says, cannot reach this particular arithmetic exception. It is saying code is unreachable. Why we are getting this particular code is unreachable? For a very simple reason, you have said that this is my try block and whatever exception it is raising, it is being caught over here. That means there is no chance for the exception handling to come over here. Because as I told you, this is the generalized exception. This is the generalized exception and this particular generalized exception should be at the end, should be at the end. Are you with me? Hence, this will give me an error. Hence, it is giving me this error saying that we cannot reach arithmetic exception. We cannot reach arithmetic exception. Are you with me? Any doubt?
so always and always the generalized exception should be at the end the generalized exception should be at the end now your program will run and it is displaying this is never reached so kindly write all the specific exception handling right at the top and the exception handling at the bottom generalized exception handling at the bottom okay so we have seen that there is a try block there is a catch block okay but there is also something called as a final block there is something called as a final block final block is a block that is always executed that is always executed whether there is an exception caught or not caught final block is always executed okay what do you mean by that let's try to understand this if you look over here there is a division by zero error arithmetic exception we haven't written arithmetic exception but we have written the generalized exception so what should it should do it should come and display that exception then what it should do it should execute the finally then finally end should be displayed let's run this okay so let's see how what happened over here 4.0 gave me an exception that was caught on the line number 50 and the sop display java dot language arithmetic exception divided by 0 so this display divided by 0 then what happened it display finally executed it display this finally executed then what happened it displayed the end then what happened it displayed the end are you with me so try if an exception occurs come over here okay and then finally in case we do something like this in case we do something like this then this is not going to fire a catch so this is going to be bypass still what will happen finally will be executed and end will be executed so let's run this code okay try now catch was not fired it came in the finally block and then end was display clear any doubt in case you are al always remember in case you are declaring a class as public it should be in a file called as test that's why the meaning of it that's the meaning of it mansi if you declare the class as public kindly save the file name also with the same name that is test.java as far as bina is concerned yes final block is always executed final block is always executed what do you mean by this let's try to understand this now pay attention all of you i am saying try 4 upon 0 okay what exception it is going to raise arithmetic exception it is going to raise arithmetic exception but have we are we catching the arithmetic exception no are we catching the arithmetic exception no so that means that exception is not caught since the exception is not caught what should happen should it display the code and come out that means will the final block be executed let's check it out pay attention try block it raises arithmetic exception we have not written arithmetic exception we have written something else array index out of bound and we have the final block and sop let's try to run this 
so now what happened was pay attention carefully system dot out dot print line four upon zero gave an exception which is not caught which is not caught so that will be displayed but that exception is displayed after the final block that means finally executed will be displayed first we are getting that finally displayed and then it is saying that at this particular line i raised an exception arithmetic exception but since it was not caught i'm going to give an error and i'm not going to display the end i'm not going to display the end important program is it clear see this is going to give an exception exception is arithmetic which you are not catching before displaying that particular error finally will be executed okay end will not be executed finally will be executed and it will display that exception The main purpose of final block is whenever we are connecting our program to network resources or your database or you are using the threads, we need to clean that particular resources. So at that time we use final block. Assume that you are opening a connection with the file. Okay, you want to open a file. You opened it. Now there are two possibility. Your program ran very well and it came out or there was some exception in writing the data to a file. In either of the cases. Final block is always going to be executed and that particular final block will have closing of that particular file. Is it clear? That will be clear to you when we learn the file handling. File, final block is always executed such as closing your connection in the database, closing your connection with the file, removing the resources from your network. Whether there is an error or not, this final block is always executed. Have you understood the final block? If everything goes well, final and the end will be displayed. If there is an error in the code when you are running it, then what will happen? Then what will happen? This will catch the, this will raise an exception. Since that exception is not caught, it will display that exception and it will come out. I hope you have got why end is not displayed because this program raised an exception which was not caught. Hence it is giving me that error and hence it won't display the end. Is it clear? Yes, there is a, for example, you can write a custom exception saying that your marks cannot be greater than 50, cannot be less than zero. So you can write a exception for that. We call it as a user defined exception we call it as a user defined exception simple point number one this raise an exception so that exception message has to be displayed right so before displaying that message final will be executed so final will be first executed then this particular arithmetic exception will be displayed since we are not catching it it will display it will never come here it will never come here. I hope Ishita have you have understood this. Since the program is raising an exception and since we have not caught it, it is giving me that particular exception and end will not be displayed. No, try is not a function. It is a block. I catch is a block. That's why I told you declare the variable outside the block.
what is the use of the try? The code which we want to monitor at the runtime should be paste in a try. Is it clear? For example, let's assume that I want to enter the marks. Okay. And if I enter the character, it is an invalid data. So those exceptions should be caught. You're typing the email address at the rate is not there. So it should catch that exception. We call it as a user defined exception. I hope you understand. When we divide four by zero, what should happen? Exception should be displayed, but before exception is displayed, final is executed. So I have a try block. I do not have a catch. I have finally, I have the end. Let's assume what will happen when you run this. Tell me now whether you understood the previous program, then you should be in a position to answer this. There is four by zero. There is no catch, but there is a final. Will the program run? And if it runs, what should be the output? When I click on the execute button, what will happen is it will raise an exception. But before raising an exception, what will happen? It will display finally executed. Okay, so finally should always be executed. Finally should always be executed. And then this particular 4 by 0 will raise an exception. Are you with me? What will be the output of the following code? What will be the output of the following code? What should be the output of the following code? So first time when you run it, what should happen? 10 divided by 3 shouldn't raise an exception. Next time, 10 divided by 2 should not raise an exception. Next time, 10 divided by 1 should not raise an exception. Next time, it is 10 divided by 0. That should raise an exception. Good. So 3, 5, 10 and at the, when the value of i is 0, arithmetic exception. Will there be any difference if I do something like this? Will there be any difference if I give the, if I write a code something like this?
3510 java dot language arithmetic exception Now what should be the output? What should be the output? Okay, some of you have got it right. So very a strange thing happened over here. I said try for SOP catch arithmetic exception. Ten divided by zero gave me an exception, and simply it came out. It simply came out. Why? Because the entire code was placed in a try catch. So be careful about your understanding of this. Okay. And now if I do something like this, for int i is equal to zero, i less than three, i plus plus, try, only monitor this a upon i. Only monitor this a upon i. Okay. Check it out. Now we get exception 10, 5, and 3. Exception 10, 5, and 3. So be very, very careful what code you are monitoring. Very simple. If you include the for loop inside the try, the moment first exception is found, it will come out. And if you do not want the for loop to be monitored, then it will execute n number of times and wherever there is an exception, it will raise an exception. It will raise an exception. Again, I'm repeating. This is not monitored, so it will run three times. No, four times it will run. Because there is no track block over here monitoring it. Whereas, I'm only monitoring A upon I. So what will happen? 10 upon 0 will give me an exception. Then I plus plus is 1, is 1 less than 3? No. Then I is 2. 10 divided by 2, no exception. 10 divided by 3, no exception. I plus plus 4 comes out. But the moment you write a try over here, then what will happen? You are monitoring this code also. So the moment it raises the exception, which, which is the first case, 10 divided by 0, what should happen? You will get an arithmetic exception and it will come out. Once you get an arithmetic exception, you cannot go back over here. You cannot go back over here. Is it clear? So be very careful what code you are monitoring. If you have any doubts, kindly raise it. So in this case, I'm only monitoring A upon I operation and this will run full time. But if I put a try over here, then what will happen? The moment I find an exception, it will come out. It won't execute the loop n number of times. Is it clear? Kindly pay attention, exception handling is not a standalone topic. It is supposed to be integrated with various commands, such as you use a file handling, it will be used. Use the next topic, which is threading, it will be used.
I want you to analyze this code on your own. I'm giving you this code. Okay, kindly analyze it. Code analysis, we call it. Do not put any comments before two minutes. This is an example of nested try. Try within a try. Do not put a comment before two minutes. So we have declared, yes. So what this is doing, this is just the question asked from the MCQ point of view, okay? This is actually from the MCQ point of view. What I'm doing is I'm having a nested try cache. The inner try is having an array with three elements. We are trying to access the third element, zero, one, two, three. So we have crossed the size of an array. So it will give me array index out of bound exception. As soon as the inner try catch is over, what will happen is, as soon as the inner try catch is over, that means this particular try catch, this particular try catch is over. What will happen is, this system dot out dot print line will become a part of the outer try catch mechanism. This is going to fire an arithmetic exception, and it is going to give me divide by zero, and it is going to give me divide by zero. Is it clear to you?
you can have as many nested blocks as you want and your catch it doesn't matter whether it is 3 or 4 it depends upon what type of a catch you are using Have a look at this particular code. Okay, some of the books have got this particular method of writing the exception handling. As I said, your logic should not be populated in the main. They should be in a function. They should be in a function. So what I'm doing over here is I'm passing, I'm in the main, I'm having a try block. It is only catching an exception. But it here it doesn't have a logic. Here what it has, it has a function call. And it's a static function. That's how directly I can call it. So I'm calling the function with the value 10. So the control comes to the function. It has got the value of AS 10. The value of AS 10. Let's remove this particular line. Okay. And this particular line, SOP 10 upon A, SOP 10 upon A will give me 10 upon 10. So no issues in this. No issues in this. Then what I do, I make a call over here by saying function 0. Now what is the value over here? We have A as 0. Okay. So the value of the value over here is 10 upon 0. Now this is raising an exception. This is raising an exception. Okay. Now the question is, since this is not placed in a try catch, will it Go back to this place where it is called from. Catch this exception. Display this error message and come out. Let's check it. Pay attention. Function doesn't have a try catch. And we are raising an exception from here when the value of this is 0, when A is 0. An exception handling is in the main. So what is happening in this case is even first time it is 10 is 10 so 10 upon 10 is 1 no problems function 0 10 upon this will be 0 so this will give me an exception we do not have a try catch but this was called from this particular location went back check that there is an exception okay and it display can't divide by 0 can't divide by 0 have you understood this This is the code we are monitoring. There is no exception handling in the function. Okay. So what happens is it goes back to the code from where we have called this, which is there in the try catch. So it should come here and display can't divide by zero. Can't divide by zero. Is it clear? Last example, then we'll, I will stop. I will tell you what you are supposed to do. You try to complete this. There is a main function. I am creating a scanner object. I have a for i is equal to 0, i less than 3, i plus plus. So I am not putting this in the try. In the try, I am making a call to the function. So this particular function. I am saying in dot next int, in dot next int. So I am going to accept two integers. Those two integers should be taken by a and b. SOP 10 upon a. So depending upon what you have entered, this should give an exception or not. If it gives an exception, it should come and display arithmetic exception. Because in case you type b as 0, then sorry, a as 0, then it should give me an exception. 
In case you enter a value of A which is not zero, then this will be working perfectly fine. Then I have an array with one, two, three. I'm trying to access the B position. In case there is, I enter the value as zero, one and two, it should work well. Otherwise it should give me array out of bound exception. So what we did, we accepted two integers A and B. We monitored the function. We caught the exception. The logic is in this particular static function. Okay. So let's run a, in this case, what is 10 upon a? Okay, so let's type a as one. And b should be 0, 1, 2. Let's make it as two. So this should not raise any exception. This should not raise any exception. No such element. Uh, next integer, next integer, in, in dot next int. Achha, three times it has to accept. Okay. Let's enter. This should raise exception. This should raise exception. So in the first case, no exception attention my first input was one and two my first input was one and two okay so what happened over here this is one this is two so this is one this is two so 10 upon one no problem arr of two zero one two three again no issues my next set of values was my next set of values was one and four So what is a one? No problem. But B is four. We do not have an index for the four. So what should happen? Array index out of bound. So what should happen? Array index out of bound. See, out of bound we are getting. My next set of the values is zero and one. So A is zero, B is one. 10 upon A, that is 10 upon zero will give me an error. Will give me an error, okay? So what will happen? It will come here and display Arithmetic exception can't divide by zero. Can't divide by zero. So based on what we are entering, it should be in a position to execute array arithmetic exception or array index out of bound exception. Okay, I will do one thing. I'll explain this program again tomorrow. Okay, one more program has to be executed that is user defined exception. Clear? And then we'll start with the threading part. Then we'll start with threads. Then we'll start with threads. So tomorrow I'll explain this program as well as user defined exception and then we'll continue with threadings. You all can leave now. Okay. Yeah, the moment the error occurs in the try block, no other statement will be executed. The remaining statement in that particular try block will be ignored. 